This presentation is for an MIS class, MIS 4478. The topic for our presentation is Strategic Alignment Model, and it is presented by Team Zeppelin, which includes Abdulaziz Jawani, Adnan Palanpurwala, and Nagib Chaudhry. Due to the accelerating power and capabilities of computer and communication technologies since the early 90s, the research of Keen, McFarlane, and Parsons has suggested that businesses would lose their competitive edge if the commerce and information technology strategies had failed to align with each other. Anne Van Katraman and John Henderson readily accept the premise in adopting analysis paper titled Strategic Alignment, a Model for Organizational Transformation via Information Technology. The role of IT, they argue, has shifted beyond its traditional back office support model towards an integral part of organizational strategy. An alignment with business positively influenced IT effectiveness, leading to greater profitability, whereas failure to leverage technology in its commercial program materially affect a business's performance and viability. However, despite a widespread acceptance of such an alignment, conventional literature had provided inadequate cl clarification regarding its nature and little guidance for its implementation. The paper achieves to fill in the gap by proposing a systematic framework to conceptualize the logic, scope, and patterns of organization transformation that depend on IT along with its management implications. Emphasizing a close cooperation between the two organizations constitutes business and IT, Ben Kitterman and Henderson have devised SAM, short for Strategic Alignment Model for comparing, analyzing the IT department goals, objectives, and activities corresponding to those of the business. Strategy in its broadest sense concerns in aligning or matching organizational resources with environmental threats or opportunities. An alignment is a simple matchup of two or more strategies in order to meet the overall objectives of the organization. A contemporary decisive organization strategy, therefore, should be forged by coordinating its business and IT objectives together. For example, if a systems administrator is providing a business manager with the information he needs so that he can make appropriate decisions when the two are aligned in terms of information delivery. Venkatraman and Henderson highlight two prominent features of SAM, IT strategy as distinct from IT infrastructure and processes, and the concept of strategic alignment as distinct from bivariate and cross-domain alignment. But before examining the former features in depth, we must introduce the domain-centric concept of SAM. SAM is defined in terms of four focus domains, two internal and two external, two business and two IT. They are composed as such. External domain, referred to as strategy domain, consists of business strategy and IT strategy. Internal domain, referred to as infrastructure domain, consists of organization infrastructure and processes and IT infrastructure and processes. Each domain in turn consists of three components, scope, competencies, and governance at the external level, and infrastructure, skills, and processes at the internal level. At external level of the business component lies the business strategy domain. It is a central concept viewing organizational transformation from a voluntaristic approach and mostly deals with three central concepts. Business scope refers to everything that might affect the business environment. This includes markets, products, services, customers, clients, and location of the business. Distinctive competencies. It is the attributes of strategy that contribute to a distinctive comparative advantage over the competitors. Business governance. Concerns with the choices of structural mechanisms to organize the business operations that recognizes the continuum between markets and hierarchy, such as strategic alliances, joint ventures, and licensing. By drawing an analogy to the business strategy, SAM also conceptualizes IT strategy in terms of three dimensions. IT scope are the types and range of IT systems and capabilities potentially available to the organization. For example, electronic imaging systems, local and wide area networks, expert systems, and robotics. Systematic competencies refer to those distinctive attributes of IT competencies like higher system reliability, interconnectivity, flexibility, set the organization service apart from the rest and contribute positively to the creation of new business strategies or better support existing ones. IT governance describes the makeup of authority behind the information technology and how the resources, risk and responsibility are distributed between business partners, IT management and service providers. Selecting the prioritizing of IT projects in the business are also parts of this component. The internal quadrant of business area is organizational infrastructure and processes, featuring three components. Administrative infrastructure refers to how organization runs its business relationships, including organizational structure, roles, and reporting. Processes, the articulation of workflows and the associative information flows for carrying out key activities. Concepts like value-added activities and process improvement apply here. Skills. The capabilities of individuals to execute the key tasks that support a business strategy, it also involves how to hire, fire, motivate, train, educate, and culture employees. Analogous to that of the business, the internal IT domain, IT infrastructure and processes is based upon similar conceptual traits. 
architecture, the technological priorities, policies, and choices that drive integration of applications, software, hardware, networks, and data management into single business platform. Processes, pertains to the actual practices and activities that the personnel do to develop and maintain applications and manage the IT infrastructure, including processes for systems development and maintenance as well as monitoring and control systems. Skills, choices pertaining to the knowledge and capabilities to effectively manage the IT infrastructure within the organization. Now let's get back to the distinguishing features of SAM that we had indicated earlier. Venkat Freeman and Henderson draw a clear line between the external and the internal domains of ID strategy by separating the firm's external alignment and internal alignment. ID strategy is separate from its internal management for the same reason that functional level strategies, such as strategic marketing management, are becoming more prominent. Strategic marketing management, recognizing the exploitation of sources of marketing advantage at the business strategy level. Strategic human resource management, highlighting the explicit consideration of human resource profiles and capabilities in the formulation and implementation of strategies, and notions of manufacturing as a competitive weapon, illustrating the potential sources of advantages that lie within the production and manufacturing function. And as, as an example, the authors highlight the decision by American Express to commit a high level of resources to its electronic imaging technology platform as a key capability to provide value-added services, example, providing copies of receipts with monthly statements as a means of differentiating its travel-related services to its IT scope. But they are conceptually different from its internal management of its data centers or global communications network. Although both are necessary for efficient leverage of the company's IT capabilities, one falls within the purview of external domain while the other is solely internal. SAM derives its values from the different types of linkages that can be constructed in between them. Bivariate fit, cross-domain strategic alignment. The bivariate fit is a simple relationship linking the two domains either horizontally or vertically. The vertical linkage outlining the infrastructure of the business is referred to as a strategic fit. The bivariate relationship between IT strategy and IT infrastructure and process described earlier is one such linkage. The horizontal linkage known as the functional integration is a linkage that is most directly related to the information technology and the alignment of the business. This linkage describes the ability of the business to successfully position itself in the marketplace by leveraging the use of IT. Arguing that neither strategic nor functional integration alone is sufficient to align an organization effectively, Venkatraman and Henderson introduce cross-domain perspectives. They work on the premise that strategic alignment at an organization level can occur only when three of the four corporate domains are in alignment. These perspectives are constructed in a type of triangular format based on the simultaneous assessment. Every perspective is made up of three components based on how it is affected in that particular assessment, anchor, pivot, and area of impact. The anchor is the considered area or domain that is the strongest area of the business that directs the change. The pivot is a designation for the weak area that is to be changed through the realignment. The area of impact is the area that will be directly affected to the change made in the pivot. Although eight combinations of cross-domain alignments are possible, four are of particular importance. They are summarized in the table in the slide and followed by a brief discussion on each. The first perspective views business strategy as the anchor of both organization design choices and the logic of IS infrastructure. The pivot is the business infrastructure which is what needs to be changed. The resulting area of impact is the information technology infrastructure. This means that the information technology architecture is going to undergo changes that must happen because of the changes in the business process. This perspective focuses on information technology planning or transformation of the business. The goals of this perspective include reducing delays and errors, enhancing services and saving time, example paperwork routing or task redefinition. Top management works as strategy formulator, IS management is a strategy implementer. This perspective is also driven by business strategy but involves the articulation of an IT strategy in support role. IT infrastructure results in as the area of impact. This shows the value of IT and its contribution to the business final product or service. Top management provides a vision and the IS management is its architect. USAA materialized its technological potential to develop a state-of-the-art document handling system it was accomplished through the joint venture with a key vendor involving, involving fundamental changes to its internal IT infrastructure consisted of data, applications, and configurations. The anchor and competitive potential perspective is IT strategy. The pivot area is business strategy and organization infrastructure is the impacted domain. It focuses on how emerging new information technologies can influence and enable new business strategies as well as develop new forms of relationships. The specific role of the top management is that of business visionary. The role of IS manager in contrast is one of the catalysts who defines and interprets the trends in IT environment. The attempt by FedEx to create a new standard for overnight delivery through its Cosmos Pulsar system 
and the corresponding implications for rede redesigning its internal processes is a key example of implementation of this perspective. The fourth perspective posts IT strategy as its anchor, IT infrastructure as pivot, and the area of impact is organization's infrastructure. It focuses on how information technology can improve the business products and services. Negligence in this perspective can result in IT outsourcing. The top management here assumes the role of the prioritizer, who articulates how best to allocate the scarce resources both within the organization. The IS manager adopts business leadership with specific task of making the internal business succeed with the operating guidelines from the top management. Additionally, Lederer and Mandela suggest that the alignment increases the likelihood of developing systems more critical to the organization and of obtaining top management support for IS. By concentrating on the alignment of strategy and infrastructure, firms may not only achieve synergy and facilitate the development of business plans, but also increase profitability and efficiency. These tangible benefits allow management to focus on the application of IT as a means to leverage their core competencies, skills, and technology scope. According to Jarvan Pai and Ivis, too tight a fit between IS and business strategy may reduce strategic flexibility. Conforming to the model, a business manager can put any amount of information into predefined boxes, but when it comes to putting a measure to it in the real world, they may find it difficult to translate into practical benefit. Since there is little in the literature at present that explains what a manager should do to these frameworks and other than understand them conceptually. Similarly, the split of operations, infrastructure, and processes into two levels, infrastructural and procedural, has insufficient explanation to enable a thorough population of information into structural domains. Hence, some argue that strategic alignment is illusionary even inexpedient. Having argued that strategic alignment is desirable, two issues emanates during its feasible materialization. The first inquires whether Venkatraman and Henderson's particular model is an appropriate way for firms to attain alignment. The second relates to how firms may become aligned. The importance of SAM in improving competitive performance and business success has been stated frequently and repeatedly, a fact that we have attempted to document thoroughly throughout our presentation. In fact, Galliers and Novel have gone as far as to designate it as a central tenant of much of the theory and practice of IS strategy. Luffman's survey reinforced the importance of SAM from perspective of 500 U.S. executives and from 300 organizations, where about half believe their organizations to be aligned after SAM. As for the second concern, the author suggests three distinct lines of implementation of SAM. Descriptive model, where the model relies on the conceptual separation of IT strategy from its internal IT infrastructure. Prescriptive model, where frameworks derive their logic and rationale from underlying theoretical arguments and empirical results. And preferred, C, the dynamic model, where the aspiring alignment is viewed as the progressive concept and is consistent with Thompson's hypothesis of elements of independent dynamics that are governed by forces of external of the organization. This dynamic process that gives the firm flexibility to take advantage of opportunistic developments without having to abandon all planning. Finally, along these lines, Van Kutraman and Henderson believe that strategic alignment model conveniently provides an ever-evolving predictive structure to conceptualize and manage the business and IT relationship with today's organizations. Thank you so much. This presentation was done by Team Zeppelin, which includes Abdulaziz Javani, Adnan Palan Purwala, and Nagib Chaudhry. This concludes our presentation and the course. Happy Holidays.